my name is Fanny Lenders, and um, I teach the studio band and the jazz band here at school. And today, um, it took me a little while to figure out what to talk to you about. Um, so many topics in the world. But I'm going to talk to you about something called imagination. Um, the reason why I thought of this topic is because this is something I feel like kids are really good at just naturally. You don't even have to really try. It seems like most kids are good at using their imagination. And I'm not sure what happens between childhood and adulthood, but it seems that sometimes adults will lose a bit of this magic called imagination. Um, so I, I would like to tell you a little bit more about that. So back when I was a kid, I had a pretty big imagination. And I used to have uh, Beanie Babies. <laughs> Those yes. little stuffed animals. Anybody know about Beanie Babies? Yeah. Can you tell I grew up in the 90s? But, um, so I had a bunch of Beanie Babies, and I would make entire worlds in my living room with these Beanie Babies. I had them all lined up. I mean, I had this whole town set up, a whole economy using candy. <laughs> and this whole town, you know, my Beanie Baby town had like a soccer team. They had like a tour guide, and they would go on vacations out to the living room or out to, you know, wherever. And I just remember that time being so, you know, free to imagine just this little world that I created. Um, now that I'm, you could say, grown up, <laughs> um, I still use my imagination, but it's a little bit different. So I imagine things like a tour that my band could go on in taking my band on the road and going to all these different cities. And before that really ever happens, you have to imagine it first. Um, there are a lot of other things I like to still imagine, but um, making the tour happen was one thing that I really wanted to do. And I really had to imagine it before I could get out there and do it, right? Um, I know that there are a lot of people around you and one of the reasons I love working with kids is because you all are so good at imagination. I see it every day. Um, and I really draw inspiration from you all with your imagination. So um, let me take out my notes because I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay, so one of the other parts of imagination that I really like is improvisation which is kind of a big word, meaning in music, where you get to make something up on the spot. And I love using my imagination to do that. Um, that's one of the ways I still get to use it today, and hopefully some of you all can learn how to do that as well, using your imagination. Um, but I would like to tell another story a little bit about imagination. Does anybody maybe raise your hand if you know of a special art work named Arthur? An artwork named Arthur with the glasses. A A R D B A R K. Anybody? Okay, so we're not here. So Arthur. There was one day where it was career day, and all of the you know animals in Arthur's world all had parents, and they all had careers, and um, you know the parents had to come to school that day and talk about their career in front of the school, right? And I remember Francine's father worked for the waste disposal. So he was basically what some people might call like a garbage man. He would come by and pick up all the garbage and then take it to the dump and, you know, dispose of it. And I remember Francine being really worried about, like, a little bit ashamed in a way. A little bit of that kind of creeping shame of her father's career. And I remember she came up to the school and was really nervous and her father came up and talked about his job and what he did. And in the end, he took all of these recycled materials, all of these tires and different things that people saw as trash and created like the coolest playground ever over at the, at the dump. And all of the, other, all of the other kids thought it was like the coolest thing and um, it ended up being like a really cool thing that he could do with his imagination. Um, so that's just one example of imagination at, at work. But another example that maybe some of you could relate to a little bit more is the game of basketball. Do you have any basketball fans? Yeah. 
Did you know that basketball was invented by a PE teacher in this state, Massachusetts? <laughs> so maybe some of you knew that. Can you imagine without an imagination, I guess, you, basketball wouldn't really exist, right? And so many other things. So what I, I was also thinking about, I heard a podcast recently that really inspired me. And they were talking about this idea of rest. And about how rest gives us the space to imagine a new future, right? And we have really busy lives, and I think we all know that things do change. That's kind of the constant of life, as things are always changing. But in this podcast, the, the speaker was talking about how important rest is for us to imagine a better future. And I thought about this, and I thought, well, what does Judaism have to say about that? And I thought and thought, I said, oh yeah, duh, Shabbat. It's a whole day of rest. So, Tonight, when you're at home with your families, I would like to invite you to just take some time and rest. Because rest is really important to recharge. And in order to imagine that future, a different future, a better future, it does require that you take some time and just rest and just leave yourself the space to imagine. So maybe let, right now, maybe let's all just close our eyes for one moment and think about where you want to be in maybe five years and imagine that. What does that look like to you? Just close your eyes for one moment, take a moment, take a little rest, and just imagine for just this moment. What, what do you see in five years? What do you see? Who is around you? What does this world look like? Just take a moment. A few more seconds to imagine that. The power of imagination, folks. So tonight, when you're at home, I'd like to invite you to imagine that future. The world is changing. What we know that, especially with COVID happening, we've all seen how unpredictable things can get. But the world doesn't just happen. Well, I guess it kind of does. But everything you see has been imagined by someone or something. Even the panther on the wall, I mean, someone had to come up with that, right? So I would like to just invite you to imagine something better for our future and see what you can do with that. I'd like to hear your thoughts, like maybe later you can come find me and tell me what you have the space to imagine. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'd like to invite you all to think about some other figures too. Because imagination creates innovation. And for us to create a real change in the world, we need to innovate. We need to come up with a new way of doing things, a way that, that invites everyone to participate in this, in this life, really. So, um, so I'm, I always uh, I get nervous about messing up the end. I need mommy now. I believe that imagination is the true key to a better future. So, thank you.